Redditors who are now married because you didn't know how to break up with your SO. How is that going for you? Story 1. I'll add my story to the mix. He and I had a very tumultuous relationship for the first few years together, due to emotional immaturity and trauma on both our parts. He was my rebound after my first true heartbreak, and we started dating way, way too soon. We fought often, broke up once or twice, and I constantly thought about leaving even after we'd moved in together. Still, I'd grown dependent on him in ways I now see were unhealthy, and while I did have feelings for him, part of me was just scared of being alone. When he shocked me by popping the question, my stomach dropped and I physically wanted to run. Every fiber in my body was yelling, no, 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 in that moment, but his proposal speech was so beautiful and heartfelt, and he was so vulnerable and open that I muttered a bewildered, yes, before I could even process my feelings. Having to call our parents immediately to share the news was just torture. Honestly, looking back on that moment, I have no idea why I wasn't just honest with him. But there was a part of me that did love and care for him, and I wanted, I don't know exactly, but I wanted to see if we could work ourselves out together, even though it all felt so hopeless and wrong. We've been together eight years now, married four, and I'm so happy to say that we are the perfect partners for each other. We've both grown so much on our own, through sheer will and hard, hard work. And in that process, we've also grown together in ways I couldn't have imagined. He is the most insightful, self-aware man I've ever met, and he loves me more than I ever felt I deserved. And through him, I learned how to love, genuinely and to the best of my abilities, selflessly. He is truly my other half in life, and without him I would be so lost. I'm so grateful that part of me that was scared and hopeless and wanted to run away screaming decided to stay, to wait and see if we could grow together, to see what life we could build together. The journey has been more painful and more difficult than anything I've ever faced, but it's also been the most precious and humbling and life-affirming experience in every way. As a wise man once said, the greatest thing you'll ever learn is just to love and be loved in return. Story 2. My wife and I were on again off again in our early 20s. I broke up with her, then she would come over in a trench coat with nothing underneath and get me back that way. She actually has mental illness, severe anxiety and depression, but she didn't know it then. I really liked the good times, but when she went crazy, I really didn't want any part of that. I couldn't leave her because I felt she was just misunderstood, even though my family didn't want me to marry her. I did, though. I proposed with my own free will and everything. Now she has been to doctors and therapy, and she deals much less with the anxiety and depression. I'm so happy I'm with her right now. She is my best friend and my lover. I truly expect to spend the rest of my life with her and be happy. Edit, thank you kind stranger for my first gold. This is great to see a positive response. There's a lot more to our story, but I'm glad I shared today. My wife is an amazing woman, and she has appreciated reading through the comments with me. Thanks for the Reddit love, story three. All of the top comments are people pointing out the positive outcomes of their situation. I feel that it would be wrong for me to not share my story, which turned out differently. I knew from a couple of months into the relationship that I didn't love her. She came from a terrible home situation, and she was severely depressed with borderline personality disorder to boot. I felt so sorry for her. I honestly worried that if I left her, she would commit suicide. She had two little girls who needed someone stable and normal in their lives. I was afraid that I would be letting them down if I left. Who else was going to help them if I didn't? Before we got married, she cheated on me, but she was in such denial about it that she managed to convince me that it didn't happen. Although looking back on it, I know it's true. We fought almost daily. We screamed at each other, and she would get so angry that she would take things that were important to us, shared symbols of our love and affection, like her wedding rings, our marriage certificate, gifts that I'd bought for her, and attempt to destroy them or throw them away. I wasn't at all interested in having close relationship with her, and most of the time I wasn't able to force myself. She could sense that there was something wrong in our relationship, and she constantly made comments to me about how I didn't love her and didn't want to be with her. Towards the end, our fighting got so bad that it was sometimes physical, never punching or hitting, but shoving and grabbing one another. I felt like I was losing control of myself. I ended up in therapy and had a relapse. I am a recovering addict and had been clean for three years when she and I got together. After we had been married for a while, she started bringing men around, friends from work. She swore that nothing was happening with them. And by this point, I was so detached from reality that I honestly didn't much care one way or the other. I finally had a breakthrough in therapy where I realized that her reaction to how I live my life is not my problem. We split up, and I spent the next six months spiraling deeper into my addiction before I started to come out of it. I have since remarried to someone I do love with all my heart, but I still have nightmares 
This is not hyperbole actual, real-life nightmares. My current wife will tell me some mornings about how I was screaming in my sleep that I'm still stuck in that horrible, abusive, loveless relationship. There simply isn't enough time for me to adequately express all of the different ramifications of that relationship. There was only one positive thing that came out of it, and that was that I learned that you cannot settle for a relationship. The person with whom you intend to spend your life has to be someone who meets all of your criteria, or you will never be happy with them. The negative consequences, on the other hand, are apparent in my everyday life even now. In my relationships with other people, especially my current wife, my finances, and my own general psychological well-being. Please, don't stay with someone unless you're sure. Story 4. Probably the best decision I ever made. Three years ago, I was so certain she was not the one for me simply because I was bored and wished I could kiss someone else. Well, one beautiful road trip vacation was all it took for me to realize we are perfectly meant to be together. We've been married almost two years and together six. I couldn't be happier that I stuck it out and am confident in saying she is the one for me. Story 5. This was me for 10 years until I finally left. I remember knowing I didn't want to marry him, but he was dependent on me. He was occasionally abusive before. Then his life circumstances made him angrier and angrier during the marriage, and he took it out on me. It wasn't even the abuse that triggered me to leave. I didn't realize it wasn't a part of marriage. It was an interaction with a random stranger that told me I was beautiful. Just that little bit of kindness made me realize what a miserable hell I chose to live in every day. He made it as hard as he could to leave, but five years later, I'm much happier. I still have depression to battle, but when I think about where I came from, I'd consider myself a survivor. Story 6. I don't have stars in my eyes when I look at him, but I think he does for me. Anything I want to do is what he wants to do too, and not just to humor me, he seems to genuinely enjoy doing whatever it is that will make me happy. With time, I've come to appreciate him more and more to the point that now I don't know what I'd do without him. But I often think that he deserves someone better than me. He deserves someone who will look at him the same way he looks at me. Story 7. I was dating an Australian dude for a couple of years. I'm American, and we exhausted all the visitor visas we could, visiting one another. Eventually, it came down to if we wanted to be together, we had to get married. We had dated a long time and loved each other, but neither of us really had marriage as a priority. So we sat down, wrote a pros and cons list, and decided getting married was the best thing for us. However, over the time we spent dating, he stopped doing a few things, like showering. When he moved back to the States as my fiancé, I noticed just the smell of him was overpowering. I caught him at one point, saying he had just showered and didn't need one. But he actually hadn't showered in two weeks. He'd go down and swim in the apartment pool and count that as a shower. In the summertime, I'm pretty sure he showered even less. I can't emphasize enough how bad it was. I literally had to throw away my couch because the stink seeped into it, and I couldn't get it out. I discovered earlier in our relationship that he didn't know how to blow his nose. Tried to show him, but he said he couldn't do it, and would just pick his nose and wipe it on the desk. Got him to at least wipe it on a tissue, but he stopped doing that and wiped it on a wall near his desk where I couldn't see, and would have the pleasure of discovering later. He also couldn't work in the States at this point, so he said he'd keep up the apartment while I worked. Yeah, he didn't, he wouldn't clean anything he thought I'd touched. The apartment was in squalor and filled with gnats and flies and a mountain of shipping boxes from his habit of ordering online. I eventually just bought paper plates and stuff and only used those, so he couldn't say I used any dishes and I could keep on him to clean up his own mess. Suffice to say, by the time the date to be married came around, I didn't want to, but he sold everything he owned in Australia. He owned his own apartment there, had his own car. He quit his job. I couldn't just send him back and not feel like a monster for not trying. So I tried. We got married. It was predictably awful. I spent a lot of nights staying at work until midnight, just drawing alone on my tablet so I could have some peace away from him. He was supposed to get a job when he got his green card in, after we got married. And he told me there was a two-year queue for it to come in. At the time, this wasn't unheard of, just a bit longer than usual, reasonable for a strained system. Yeah, he lied so he wouldn't have to get a job. Couldn't work without a green card. He got it in six months or so. I found out huge fight ensued. Gave him one last chance to make it right. Go get a job and get his cow together. He got an unpaid online internship. I continued my late nights at work until one evening I was driving home and just started screaming out of the blue, just screaming and yelling at myself for what was becoming of my life. I hated my job. I hated my home life. I hated the state I lived in. I was extremely depressed and something had to change. Pulled over on the side of the road and just screamed at myself for letting it get this bad. So I went home, we had a fight, I laid out everything and told him I wanted a divorce. It was actually a pretty peaceful divorce. I think he knew by then that it wasn't working too. But while we were in the middle of it, he knew I loved travel but wasn't well off. 
so he told me that I'd never get back to Australia without his help. It just so happened that I had recently looked at a map of the world and figured out where the exact opposite part of the world was from where I was, in just an idle wish to be as far away as possible. It was the ocean between Madagascar and Western Australia. With what he said in that fact, that was enough for me. So quit my job, sold my stuff, got a year-long working holiday visa, and moved near Perth. So I suppose it worked out okay for me, once it was all over. I don't think I would have had the motivation to do that if I wasn't fueled by pure spite and desperation to never be where I was again. I ended up working and traveling until my money ran out through Aos, Hawaii, lived there a year, across the western U.S. and B.C., Canada. Then I moved to the place I liked most in my travels that didn't require a visa. So now I live near Seattle. I'm poor and single, renting a room with a couple of my closest friends, and extremely happy. TLDR. Married a stinky man because he left everything in his home country to be with. Gave it a try, he made the apartment into a stink hell and lied about his green card so he wouldn't have to work. Got divorced, moved across the world temporarily because he told me I couldn't. Much happier. Story 8. We made the choice to stay for the kid when I became pregnant at 17. Even on my wedding day, all I wanted to do was run away. I didn't want it, but I knew I couldn't make ends meet on my own. And he was a great dad, even as young as we were. It's been 8 years and I can't say things have always been perfect. We really had a lot of growing up to do, but I'm so happy to have him by my side. We built our lives from the ground up, and it's been a privilege. We've fought, nearly split a couple of times, but we always come back to each other. He's my best friend, and I really don't want to spend my time with anyone but him. About a year ago, I actually found out he didn't want to get married either. He wanted to run away just as much as I did. So that was pretty interesting, because one of the reasons I didn't want to leave was because I didn't want to break his heart. Turns out he was thinking the same thing. Edit. My first gold. Thank you. Edit. Just now reading the comments as a lot of you mentioned past posts. Our relationship is nowhere near perfect, but we are happy now. We've both made mistakes. And yes, I did tell him about how I started to develop feelings for someone else. I actually chose to change jobs and completely severe ties with that person. It wasn't worth losing him. Story 9. Well, my first marriage was one of those situations. It went okay for the first year, then the next three years it limped along before going into a death spiral, which ultimately ended up in a cow show of a divorce. If you're not happy in the relationship and can't see yourself wanting to be married to your SO, don't do it. It's intellectually and financially exhausting, even without children involved unless by some miracle you can both come to agreements on everything. Second marriage has been infinitely better. Always have trials and tribulations in a relationship, but we love each other and support each other. Story 10. I'd already been married and divorced the once and feeling a bit of a failure in that respect, but eventually hooked up with this woman who as time went on it became apparent she was an alcoholic. Cow got progressively worse to the extent I had to have her arrested when I woke up one night with her standing over me with a knife. Anywho, stuck by her, rehab the works. Five years later, we got married, and that was seven years ago. If I'd had any sense, I would have ditched her, but today things are much better. When things are good, they're very good, and when they're not, it doesn't last that long. She can still be a little hard work, but then I'm sure it's the same for her. And that's what a relationship is all about, isn't it? Story 11. This will probably get buried, but oh well. We moved in together after six months of dating simply because he was the first guy I had dated who actually had his cow together, and I was so desperate to leave my parents' house. He made everything about me, the close relationship, our dates, our vacations, etc. I had never been in a relationship where I was considered a priority. He was absolutely perfect, quirky, but perfect in my eyes. He was older by three years and had the work ethic of a horse. He was going to work and provide for others until the day he passed away, no doubt about it. After a year of living together, things were great. We communicated well. The close relationship was fantastic. We lived for one another. It was perfect. He proposed. I said yes. Six months into our engagement, my parents arranged an intervention sort of meeting and told me it was about the failing relationship between my brother and I. He was in an emotionally abusive relationship, and she had led him to drink, which led him to become an alcoholic, and my parents refused to believe me. So at this intervention, my family proceeds to tell me how they don't want this wonderful man in my life to join our family. They think I'm making a mistake because nobody is that genuine, and he just comes across as fake, and we don't like how open he is. This came after they promised our budget for our wedding and gave us an ultimatum to either have the budget for a wedding or a down payment on a house. So I cried, I pondered, I cried some more, and I started to doubt all of the motives behind his actions. I came up with these weird alternative motives and started doubting all of his intentions. But then he asked me two months later if I would marry him on New Year's Eve. In two weeks. No dress. No friends. Just closest family. I told him I didn't want my family there and only his. And he says, The only way I'm going to marry you is in the presence of your family. 
You respect your parents too much to not have them there. And so I told my mom what our plans were and she immediately asked me, Are you pregnant? Why the rush? I don't understand why you're in such a hurry to throw your life away. And I wanted to run. I wanted to not marry him and not talk to my parents and just disappear. I felt so alone until I got home that night and he held me. I didn't even have to tell him what happened because he just knew the conversation didn't go well with my mom. And that's when I realized that you don't pick your parents, but you get to pick your SO. And that's who you need to be happy with because that's who you spend the rest of your life with. And I realized that he respected my wishes more than my parents respected them. So I told my parents where we would be getting married and if they wanted to be there, we would be getting married at 3 o'clock. So we get to my future in-law's house and they have gutted their home of all furniture and turned their dining room into an altar for us. They have stripped their house of all Christmas decorations and tied bows in our wedding colors that would have been had we kept our original plan. They set up chairs and linens and tables and centerpieces of my favorite flowers in their living room that have converted to a reception area. They made dinner for 40 people, combined my family and his. He grew up Mormon with eight siblings. Then my family starts to show up. My parents were first to arrive. They walk in and see what my in-laws have done, and my mom starts to cry. The first time in 10 years that she shed a tear, and she realized just what kind of environment I was marrying into. One that was loving and accepting and supportive. She was angry with herself for wanting to convince me otherwise, and so I said, I do, in spite of them. Now, a year and a half later, my husband and I have completed our five-year plan. We completed it in 10 months. This involved buying a house, paying off two cars, and consolidating all of our credit card debt so that we could prepare for children. I have learned how to cook and experiment with recipes. I have this incredible support system in the form of my in-laws and husband. He has pushed me to find my career and it is taking off like crazy. And I am so thankful I decided to spite my parents and not run. I have never been happier. I am so proud I didn't let the opinion of my parents alter my view like so many people do. I started down that path and I went against my doubts and trusted my gut and I'm in a much better place for it. TLDR, parents tried to convince me not to marry my husband, and I went against their wishes and did it anyway, and I'm all the merrier for it. Story 12, well, I made the throwaway, so here goes. It's flipping horrible. She is the single most useless, incompetent human I've ever met. She doesn't work, but she's so emotionally needy that I'm often an hour late to work because she's begging me not to go. She can't be bothered to clean up after herself, let alone take care of the beautiful house we bought with my money. But she complains when I try to clean because I'm not spending time with her. I do literally everything to keep our lives running while she sits on the couch watching TV all day. And yet somehow, somehow in the rare fleeting moments that I get enough spine to talk back to her, she immediately finds a way to make me the bad guy. She refuses to take responsibility for anything and always tries to make everything my fault. Her perennial excuse is that she's depressed and has ADD, but she stopped going to therapy. I loved paying for all the missed appointments she didn't tell me about and won't go back. She complains endlessly about everything in her life all the time. When she has a cold, which is apparently always, you'd think Satan himself was jamming his spined banana up her nose all day. We have a kid. After being married for about a year, we decided to open up our marriage. By which I mean, we had one conversation about it. Then she made an online dating profile and started chatting with guys. And then I found out she had drunkenly kissed someone. So I figured I might as well just go along with it. Six months later, she was pregnant. I was pretty sure it wasn't mine, but she fudged the timeline and cried whenever I tried to talk to her about it until one day there we were with a kid. After about a year and a half, I realized I loved the kid and based on one or two things, I was pretty sure he was actually mine. So I did a DNA test without telling her. Not mine after all. I spent that day crying in the bathroom at work and I'm pretty sure it's created a permanent rift in my relationship with my kid. Every day is the worst day of my life. Every night when I go to bed, I pray I won't wake up. I'm not going to terminate myself, mostly because I'm a coward, but also because the one time I almost did, I got yelled at for half an hour about how selfish I am, and I don't want to risk that again. Also, I'm trying to be a good dad despite everything, and I might be able to be a buffer to protect my kid from her. I sleepwalk through every day in a haze of unreality. Mostly, I just daydream about what would happen if she and the kid passed away in a car crash or something. My life would be so good. Hell, I'd be fine with just her going. I'm basically a single dad already, with an invalid spewing bike at me from the couch. It would be easier without her. Good people get taken for no reason every day. As for me, maybe I'll get lucky and pass away young. Story 13. We had a baby at 16 that passed away due to hydrin encephaly. I didn't know how to leave her after something like that. At 18, I joined the military and decided to start a family with her. At 20, I found out she cheated on me and decided to divorce. But she got pregnant on a one-night bender with me. So we figured it out again. At 26, we had another child. 
Five months later, I hired a PI and caught her cheating on me again. She just had a deprivation from someone else and we are waiting on our one-year separation for a divorce. So to sum it up, it's going terrible. Story 14. He was my FWB. He got mad when I wanted to stop sleeping together when I started seriously dating another guy. But I agreed to go out on a date with the FWB before we broke up. He was very good looking. Intimidated me at first. He was also arrogant and I hated that. He hadn't been in a serious relationship before. It took probably six months of him and I'm making that transition from a FWB to a relationship. I wanted to break up with him on like a daily basis, but then I would see him trying pretty hard to let go of the arrogance and be a good boyfriend. I felt like if I broke up with him, it'd ruin him for life, and he'd never have a functional long-term relationship. After about six months then, though, he finally let his guard down. He's still confident and kind of bossy, but not an arrogant thorn like he used to be. I think I loved him prior to that point, but not in a consuming, forever kind of way. We got married many, many years ago. We have a child, and I cannot imagine living without him. He's an elemental part of my life, and I adore him. Story 15. I was young and in love. My now ex-husband impulsively proposed I was 20, he was 23. I think he would have called it off, but we found out we were pregnant. Our fall wedding ended up being a gunspring wedding. Six months into our marriage, we had our baby boy. Two months after our son was born, my ex's dad unexpectedly passed away. He was emotionally out by then. He didn't come home at night. I had my friend over all the time so I wouldn't be so lonely. They ended up having an affair and are now married. Unhappily married because he always lets me know. If he hadn't have cheated, I think we would have been in an awful marriage for life. I didn't want to leave. I really wanted to work it out, but I loved him more than he loved me. He didn't know how to break up with me and kept making my life hell and it impossible not to leave him. He's now doing this with his current wife. Story 16. It was a whirlwind courtship fueled by alcohol. I thought she was a rock star. Everything about her was cool and she was beautiful. I had a bad feeling about it, but she was stable and successful and I was not, and I seemed to make her very happy. I went through with the marriage because I felt that I could make her happy. I changed everything I could about myself. I went vegan because she was. I went to psychiatrists to iron out emotional issues and anxiety. I stopped associating with people she saw as being bad influences. I stopped pursuing goals she thought were a threat to our marriage. I stopped telling her about aspects of my day that might have the slightest chance of upsetting her. I started doing sweets to deal with her constant negativity, paranoia, neurosis, and insecurities. I planned my own and called my mother to say goodbye. But then after hearing her say she loved me, I decided not to and then had the courage to leave. Over the course of four years, my ex eroded my sense of self, confidence, and freedom. It's been an expensive month leaving her and starting over, but has cost the people who do love me a lot less than finding me dead. She can live in misery. That's her choice. I will not. Story 17. We were 20. She got pregnant. Broke up. A week later is when she tells me. We spent the years not together. I didn't want him growing up in a split household. I know that hell. Got back together. Me for our son. Her cause she loved me. Married 15 years. Two more kids. The dogs. She puts up with me. I would be a mess without her. I love being married and having a family. I have things that are just for me. We love to hang out together. Kids are out of the house in a few years, and I can't wait to get to know her all over again. Story 18. I knew in my gut that I didn't love him, but was suffering undiagnosed depression on top of grieving the death. I wanted someone to take care of me. Here we are 25 years later, and we can't afford to divorce. Kids are near college age. He loves the house, but can't afford to buy me out and can't afford it on his own. I could happily walk away, but can't afford to live close by for the kids. We live in a stupid expensive area. Hey, kids. Listen to that gut feeling, that little voice in your head. The pain you suffer now is so much easier than years of torture and complications later down the road. Story 19. I'm damaged goods. There is a long line of ex-girlfriends and no less than three engagements to attest to this. I learned how to relationship from my mother, unfortunately. Met my wife while I was in serious pain over a breakup that I was sure was the one. Had a fling, she wound up pregnant, and I decided I couldn't go through the other options again, so we got married. Over the next couple of years, we were on the verge of falling apart every time we saw each other. I was still to the sky up on my ex, and then she decided she wanted me back. I'm ashamed to say it, but if she'd lived closer, I don't know if my marriage would have worked. I held grudges and was selfish and didn't consider the damage I caused my own kids, let alone my wife. It came to a boiling point when we were making the long drive to visit her family for the holidays, and she asked me if I even wanted to be married. I had to stop and honestly figure out the answer to that. Once I figured out that, yeah, I wanted to be married, we had to figure out how to do that. There was quite a bit of work to do, but now, 12 years later, I honestly can't imagine life without her, and I dread the day she realizes she can do better. Of course, she's such a good person that I'm sure she already did, and is sticking it out for my benefit. In short, after two poor years, we've had 10, 
that have been almost shockingly effortless. That isn't to say that there haven't been problems, but literally every relationship I've ever had before this was filled with almost constant fighting. Oh, and our kids are freaking angelic, which is absolutely her fault. If it was up to me, they'd be the same sort of foul-mouthed delinquents I turned out to be. Edited for a bit of clarity. Story 20. Was very immature in my mid-twenties. I just wanted to party. I didn't know if I wanted her or not, but we were in a long-distance relationship. She moved to my city, BC, my job had the most potential to provide. At that point, I was, oh, cow, she's moving up here for me. Guess we are getting married. Ended up even more madly in love. Had two kids and couldn't imagine my life any other way, except I'd probably be dead or in jail considering my alcoholism. She's seriously the anchor that keeps me grounded and not into the sun like Icarus. Things aren't always perfect, but they never are. Story 21. I suppose this qualifies. Disclaimer, I'm no longer married to this person, thankfully. I had been dating a girl for a month. I thought she was rad. We were making out, and in the passion of the moment, I said I wanted her to be my wife, meaning one hypothetical day in the future. Yes, I pulled a full-on Mosby. Well, to my bewildered surprise, she thought I was actually proposing, and she said yes, and started crying with joy. Whoops. Bigger whoops? I went along with it. I figured I was serious about wanting to be with her, so why not? Long story short, we got married six months after we met. Much longer story, even shorter. We were divorced five years later due to her infidelity. Who knew someone like that was so impulsive? To end on a positive note, I used the divorce as an opportunity to work on myself, and I'm now married to an amazing woman. We got engaged for real, after a reasonable amount of time, and life is better than I ever thought it could be. Story 22, Beyond Awful. We were only together for six months after I left another guy for cheating on me. My family had completely abandoned me. My mother had passed away, and my father had taken every dime. We got married so I could finish school, literally a courthouse wedding. Right after, he had me delete all of my social accounts and started going through my phone constantly. I can never talk to anyone, leave the house, or spend any money on myself. I'm put down constantly in every way you can think of. Never have close relationship. Every day I tell him I want a divorce. But apparently he's too in love with me to let me leave. The only good thing that has come from it is my beautiful two-year-old daughter. I still don't know how to do it, but the sooner I can get away, the better. Story 23. Cow. I have been alienated from all my friends and am basically on house arrest under constant watch, unable to use my phone without being questioned, and am unable to take part in some of the things that gave me joy. For example, smoking a joint on a Friday night. I am allowed out to work my 60-hour weeks, though. Meanwhile, she has a great social life, goes out, uses her phone constantly, has been caught cheating twice with the same guy, will randomly stop all forms of housework and explode at me for doing nothing after a 15-hour shift. This weekend, she had me driving all weekend and I cooked four days in a row, asked her what she was doing for dinner and got told to fudge off. I found out I had a brother sister from my dad's side, met him once age 12, dead now, and shortly after meeting them for the first time, went behind my back and began begging them for money. We didn't need it and they promptly dropped all contact with me. That was fun. Oh, and the close relationship is probably on average every six, eight weeks. Not that I care much anymore. I've been reduced to working and online gaming. She has totally removed my independence and masculinity. I think the only reason I stick around is because she has systematically destroyed me as a person, and it's just easier this way. I honestly wouldn't know how to escape the deep roots she has implanted on me. It's okay, though. I enjoy gaming, I guess. Edit. Thanks for the overwhelming amount of support replies you are all posting. I kind of just posted this to vent after a long, long time. I've got a lot to think about. I've always known our relationship wasn't normal or healthy, and I won't pretend to be a saint. Two sides to a coin. But really, I've wanted out for a long time, and I've tried and failed so many times. I'm trapped, and I need to escape. I realize that now edit too. I'll stop replying to people now. Thanks again for all the messages. Story 24. Here goes nothing. Everything was great for a while while we were dating. Ended up getting pregnant and had a beautiful baby girl. I also knew that I didn't ever want to marry her. A big reason of it was, and still is, her mother. But I figured things would get better. But I didn't want my child to grow up having to switch between houses to see parents like I did. It was all right for about a month or so, then everything changed. She didn't and still doesn't ever want to do anything. Our daughter is almost two now, and we still don't do anything ever. I couldn't tell you the last time we did anything close relationship. And she told me recently, you better get someone to send you or watch prohibited photos because I never feel like doing anything with you. She hates whenever I see my friends. And because of all this, I've fallen into a depression. I wake up every day and hate my life a little bit more. I think I out divorce a lot, but I honestly have no idea where I would go. Story 25. Not exactly my situation, but it's similar. 
I just had to get this out and tell someone we've been married for nearly 10 years. High school sweethearts? Married at 19 because the military has a way of coercing those kind of major life decisions on young kids. Speaking of kids, we have none. We always have just told each other sometimes soonish. She focused on her education instead while I was in the military and spending most of my time deployed. She obtained three degrees, worked hard to obtain a professional license in her field. I finished up my military service and I'm a third-year college student now. Back to the kids thing, many of our couple friends are pregnant, and this of course opened the door for a serious conversation. My wife picked a date this fall to go on vacation getaway and start trying for a baby. Here's the hang-up. I'm mostly certainly transgender. I've always felt off. I never felt quite comfortable in my own skin. I've wrestled with feelings that I was broken or assembled improperly. I struggled to feel manly or masculine, which was one of the motivating factors to join the military after high school. I was hoping it would solidify my machismo and I could push away those feelings once and for all. It kind of worked for a time. But coming home from deployments and spending time at home, the feelings of not liking being a man crept back in. I explored my femininity through secret closeted cross-dressing. In these moments while dressed up, I felt whole, complete, and at peace with myself and the world. Yet I simultaneously felt insane amounts of shame and guilt. So I didn't cross-dress often. Maybe less than 10 times in a span of 7 years. For the longest time, I would stare at myself in the mirror, looking for feminine features in my face, always happy when I could find one. I look at women, and I don't even lust after them. I just appreciate them and have waves of jealousy that they get to live their lives as women. In the last year, we had a family member move out of our house, college-age sibling graduated, and I took the opportunity of a quieter house to explore my other side. I dressed up more often and learned more about myself. I pushed away from many of my military friends since they alpha male. High testosterone mentality just disgusts me. I just want to be gentle, loving, and kind. My best friend is a good person, but he constantly pokes fun at the SJW movement and LGBTQ plus communities. This hurts me deep inside, and I have reduced my contact with him to insulate myself. In this same period, I started doing research into gender issues and read many stories about transgender folks, both uplifting stories and living nightmares. I learned there is a term and psychological diagnosis for what I experience, gender dysphoria. It felt relieving to know my feelings were recognized I wasn't just some bad person. Through my self-exploration and education, I no longer felt shame, just guilt that I was hiding this from my wife. So now that she pinned down a date for parenthood, I felt trapped in a corner. I had to tell her how I truly feel inside. I know it's not fair to her to have kept this from her for so long. I had hoped I could just keep it buried deep down and suppress my oddness. But the feelings haven't abated. They have only grown stronger and stronger. I just didn't know how to tell her. She is a very sweet girl, quite vanilla and mostly inside the box. I love her to pieces, but I know this would be far from her more conservative viewpoints. A turning point was when I looked in the mirror one afternoon and I couldn't recognize the odd man staring back at me. He seemed like a total stranger. This messed with my head. And I had trouble acting normal. My wife picked up on it asking me why I seemed so sad. Ian had to tell her I couldn't just enter the age of parenthood without her knowing about me. After an hour of crying and her holding me, I finally told her, I don't like being a man. This was two months ago. Life has been in turmoil since I confessed to her. She is struggling with her identity and role. She is heartbroken and says having children is no longer an option. She has no dreams or goals as they all centered around children. She says she wants to be married to her man and doesn't want to look like a sapphic. She had a rough night while I was away and engaged in some minor self-harm. Since she has gone to her doctor and is now on antidepressants, I know she is sticking around with hopes I can just work with my therapist and determine my feelings of wanting to be a woman are not valid. She cries most nights and our weekends are spent in anguish. She keeps begging, please, please pick me, and says she hopes she is worthy. Do you know how hard it is to hear her pleading? I am so flipping torn. I don't want to keep living a lie, but I love my wife and need her. I see what this is doing to her and feel like a total piece of cow, like a literal garbage human being. The worst part is, this isn't come conscious and poor decision I made that is ripping her heart out, like if I cheated or something. This is feeling of my identity and who I am. Deep down the real me, I have no idea what to do. If I choose to pursue transition, I will surely lose my marriage. If I choose not to, I don't know how I can keep on living out the rest of my life as a lie. I'm so lost and scared. This world is cruel. Story 26. I went through a period of this but stuck through it. I don't know why, but I can now say I am glad I did. We were just young and dumb and would argue about stupid cow. Not just a little bickering, but full-on yelling for hours over the most petty cow. She was the super jealous type, like any young new relation. Now she is my best friend and my life partner, and I wouldn't have it any other way. She is the female version of myself with larger balls. All of our interests align most of the time, so that is great too. 
Got to find yourself a partner who you can have fun with when your cloths are on. Story 27. She really, really, really wanted marriage, kids, stability, everything I didn't want. I wanted to break up, but didn't want to break her heart. I thought it would never work out, but seeing the smile on her face when I proposed was worth more than anything in the world to me. Nine years later, we were perfect for each other. Best friends, partners in life, travel companions. The close relationship never stopped being amazing. We never stopped being affectionate or loving. Then a switch flipped in her brain. She wanted kids now with a husband that made more money. Nothing else mattered. I had been swayed by this time into the inevitability of having kids. But the one ground rule we set, that she would never force me to change my career, was being broken. She felt as bad as I did about it, but it didn't change her priorities. She filed for divorce four months ago. I was shocked. I was depressed for a bit, but now my career has taken off. I dated many girls for the first time in a very long time. Settled on a new girlfriend and I'm very happy. She is still looking for her rich guy. I can't help but think I robbed her of the time when she was younger and could have more easily found that rich guy and that it would have been better for her if I broke up with her years ago instead of marrying. Story 28. I walked to a gas station in the middle of the night in pouring rain wearing slippers after taking massive dose of NyQuil my friend came with me. She was trying to help me get over my boyfriend and gave this tall peach man my number. We did the sky out a couple of times, never really clicked. Actually rather disliked one another, and now we are pretty sure it was hate. He was desperate to get away from his psychotic mother and his twin bed that was wall to wall. He's 6'9". A shower that was only 5.5 .5 feet tall. He moved into my apartment two weeks after we met while I was at work. We clicked in the close relationship department quite well, but never really managed to get along otherwise. He was a total jackass, and his best friend was constantly dragging him over to apologize to me after knockout fights about lying and things of that nature. I credit his buddy for everything, really. The only reason why we stuck together was because we were each other's rebounds and figured it was better than being alone. We moved three times, found stable jobs. He still works there today. He suddenly lost about 100 pounds in four months. He started getting dizzy when he stood, blacked out at work a few times. He had major spine pain, SP when drinking, but he had a football injury as a teen that paralyzed him. Surgery helped him walk again, but he's always had some pain, so it was brushed off. I made an appointment for him to receive a cortisone and forced him to go. The doctor came in and told us they couldn't do it because he was covered in cancer. Every bone, organ, even soft tissue. Stage 4 Hodgkin's lymphoma, which was very treatable. It came back a total of five times. He had chemo, then chemo plus stem cell transplant, then radiation three different times in three different areas over the course of six years. Somewhere during his stem cell, his mother started trying things while he was in the hospital, making herself his power of attorney at sea. The hospital staff told me what happened. The second he was out of the hospital from the stem cell we married, October 31st, as a big fudge, you to everyone, including his mother. It was just us and our witnesses. We fell in love sometime after that. It's been 10 years since we met and have our sixth wedding anniversary this year. He's still a flipping jackass, but I'm a bad person and it evens out. We don't fight anymore. There's never been a loyalty or cheating issue. Mostly finances, stupid cow like lying, and our general inability to give any kind of control to another human being. We are exact opposites, so learning that it was okay to be exact opposites really helped us appreciate one another, but it took years. He had to get used to no longer being served like a king. Cancer means he did not lift a oh no finger for six years, and still struggles with putting others first, but he tries hard, and we are definitely soulmates now. Looking back, we don't really know how the cow this happened, but every day is pretty cool when you wake up with your best friend. It seems like the people who truly end up connected on a deep level didn't really opt to be in that sort of relationship. It just happened. Then many other things happened, but none of them were deal breakers. Then you learn to appreciate someone else, form a bond, and then fall in love. I tell all of my friends to never expect a relationship to just be perfect from the beginning. It does happen, but not often. Make sure you know and are clear about your deal breakers going in. If you find yourself consistently hanging out with someone you hate, Maybe your heart knows something your jackass brain is too busy to figure out. Story 29. She started seeing someone else while I was gone for military training. Tries to blame it on me, says I've changed too much. Although she started seeing him before I even came home for her to see any difference. She barely speaks to me. No bodily contact whatsoever. Pulls away every time I try to hug her. Turns away every time I try to kiss her. Is texting him 247. Even found some close relationship videos she sent to him a few days ago but forgot to delete them off of her computer. Life is great! Story 30. How is that going for you? Every single day I dream of what I'd be if I hadn't met her. If I had walked away from her like everyone told me to, but I didn't. Now we are married and she's... 
okay, I guess. But I always felt like being in love was supposed to be more than okay. Some folks say they can't imagine their life without their spouse. For me, literally all I do is imagine my life without mine. I just daydream about it all the time. Story 31. I tried to ghost a guy after our second or third date, but he was very sweetly persistent, so I gave him another chance. And one of my most trusted confidants told me I would be stupid and self-destructive to give up on him when he was clearly the most mature and genuine guy I'd ever dated. Thanks for the advice, Lorraine. That was over seven years ago. We've now been married for four years and have a cat and a baby together. He's awesome and we're very much in love and I'm so glad he didn't let me fade in those early days. Story 32. I want to answer this because I'm hoping it will speak to some of the people out there. I was a person who was afraid of commitment. I dated countless people and none of them seemed like the right on to spend the rest of my life with. I finally met who I thought was the perfect person and I fell in love with this person. The thing is the more serious it got, the more scared I became. I had many thoughts of leaving and I had many reasons why this person wasn't the one for me. Here's the thing. There is no one perfect person. Life isn't like the movies. All you can do is find someone who you are attracted to on a physical, emotional, and moral values level. After that, it is all commitment and communication. It won't be easy. It shouldn't be easy, but it is worth it. We are now happily married, but there has been some tough times. In the end, it was getting through those tough times that made us stronger as a unit. Good luck, people. I hope you find happiness.